Welcome back to Chess Dog. Today we've got a really special treat. This is a game between Tani Atawumi and Gotham Chess, or Levy Rosman, who as you, you know him on YouTube, he's the most successful uh, chess YouTuber. And this is a blitz game they played, three minutes for each side, in New York City in the park. And this is really an amazing game. You know Tani Atawumi, of course, who has, has a great story. He's 12 years old, he's a FIDE master, working on his IM title. Uh, Gotham Chess already has his IM title. So this is a, a high quality, entertaining blitz game. I think you're going to enjoy it. Let's jump right in. Tani Atawumi has the white pieces. Gotham Chess has black. Tani begins with E4. Gotham responds with D5, the Scandinavian or center counter opening, usually after pawn takes, which is what uh, was played by Tani. Uh, queen takes D5 is the most common. Knight to C3, and the queen can go to D6, D8, or most commonly to the A5 square. But instead, uh, Gotham has a, a trick up his sleeve. He plays the move knight to f6. And the idea here is to put pressure on d5, but there's a lot of tricks and traps and gambits that you play when you play knight to f6. So Tani's going to have to be very careful here about what he encounters. Uh, if C4, for example, then E6 could be played. This is known as the Icelandic gambit after pawn takes. And very quickly, you know, they're putting pressure on the pinned knight is an example of a line. So what Tani does is he just goes ahead and plays D4. Says, I'm not going to try to protect the pawn. I'm just going to try to get my pieces out and play a good game of chess. Bishop to G4. Gotham says, I'm still not going to take that D5 pawn. This is known as the Portuguese variation, and this is another invitation to wild tactics. For example, after f3, pushing the bishop back, bishop f5, c4, trying to protect that pawn. Again, e6, d e6, and black can just ignore the e pawn and play knight c6. Pawn takes with check, king takes, and if he plays d5 to kick the knight, the knight to b4, threatening knight to c2 because it would be protected by the bishop, knight to a3, and then bishop c5. Now the white king is stuck in the middle of the board. After bishop e2, rook to e8, black is just winning here. He's far too well developed, and white's king is just going to get crushed. So Tani says, I'm not going to do any of that stuff. Just get the bishop out, bishop e2, get my pieces developed. Bishop e2, queen e2, and now queen takes d5. He wants the knight developed on f3. That's why he retakes with the queen. A knight to f3, knight c6, and now c4. He doesn't block the c-pawn with knight to c3. Instead, he plays to c4 first to kick the queen out and get a, a fuller pawn center, more control of the central squares. Now here Gotham plays queen to e4, offering an exchange of queens. And usually white will not do that. He'll play bishop e3 and then try to gain a tempo against the queen by playing knight to c3. But in this case, Tani goes ahead and exchanges queens. He's not afraid of the end game here. Now as it turns out, this never reaches an end game. This ends up being a very strong attack just with queens off of the board. And now bishop to e3 is played to overprotect d4, and this move is a novelty. So Gotham Chess has to make his own decision about what he wants to do, and he plays the move knight to b4, threatening knight to c2 check, forking Tani's king and rook at a1. Now this is an interesting decision. He's basically moving the same piece twice in the opening, so there's always risk in that. And I want you to no notice something. Notice this bishop on f8 and this rook on h8. When the game ends, they're still going to be right there, as are all of these pawns blocking them. So this is definitely a lesson against moving already developed pieces. Knight to a3 covers this square, so there's not going to be a fork. So Gotham says, I can, I'm going to get material anyway. He plays knight to d3 check. Maybe something safer like e6, getting that bishop out would have been better. Knight to d3 check. Now this is an attack on the king, and it's an attack on the b2 pawn. King e2, knight takes b2. So he's got some material, and it looks like Tani can just play rook to b1, kick the knight away, and grab the b7 pawn, but that doesn't work because of knight to c3 check, which would fork the king and the rook. So Tani plays an exclamation point move in response, a very strong move, knight to b5. Not only does he threaten to grab on c7 and fork black's king and rook, he also covers this c3 square so that black could not come in 
and hit the king with check later. A very powerful idea. Uh, if king d7 was played in response and just knight to e5 check, which is pointed out by Gotham himself, uh, there is an amazing computer idea here, though. That's rook to c8, and after a knight takes a7, knight to c3 check, king d2, and now rook to a8. And so if the knight returns, the knight at c3 could actually take it. But that's a very hard uh, concept to see over the board, particularly in a blitz game. So castling long is what Gotham Chess played. And now rook a to b1. Tani's not interested in just grabbing a pawn on a7. He wants more than that. He wants to go after this king and plays rook a to b1. So knight to c4. That's two pawns sacrificed now for Tani. Uh, but he plays rook h to c1. And look at this position. Look at the power of these rooks aiming at the black king. He could have just taken a pawn, but after king d7, most of his advantage would have been gone. By playing rook h to c1, he's really putting maximum pressure on Gotham's king. Knight e to d6 was played. If he takes on e3, uh, then just king takes e3, attacking the knight. When the knight moves, it's rook c7. Knight takes, king takes, and then here forking the two rooks and white's just easily winning. So now, Tani takes on a7 with check, but it's not because he wants a pawn. It's because he wants to flush this king out into the center of the board and have it bounce around like a pachinko ball until it gets mated in, in the dead uh, center of the board. Now, uh, he can't play king to b8 here because knight to c6 check forks the king and the rook, and this b7 pawn is pinned by this rook. So Tani would win serious material in that case. So Gotham plays the king to d7. Now knight to e5 check. Knight takes, pawn takes, and the knight moves to f5. And Tani plays rook to b7. And we see still, over here, the bishop and the rook on their original squares. The bishop can't even move because it's blocked in by pawns that have not yet moved. Now, if you look at this position, after king to e6, the most natural move for white by far is rook c takes c7, grabbing the extra material. And white is definitely winning after this move. But Tani is more aggressive than that. And in this position, instead of taking the pawn, he plays rook to c6 check. He says, I'm not after pawns, I'm after kings. So he plays check to push that king back into the center of the board. King takes e5, rook to b5, check. Now here, if the king moves to e4, then f3 is checkmate. So that definitely does not work. So instead, Gotham blocks with rook to d5. And at this point, it looks like he might be able to escape. He may, might be able to escape. f4, check, king e4, then rook to c4, check. And this is the move he had put his hopes in. Knight to d4, check. So he blocks white's check but also delivers check himself. So the question I have for you is, what was the brilliant combination that Tani Adewumi played in this position to win the game? I'll give you a second. That's right. He played rook takes knight check. Now, there's no point in Black's king running to f5 and just giving up all his material. That would be uh, pointless. So he recaptures the rook, and then the coup de grace, the brilliant final move, Rook to e5, check, mate. A brilliant attack from Tani Adewumi. And I think you can see why I wanted to share this wonderful game with you. By the way, if you would like to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the uh, thanks button below the screen. And uh, even after going over this great game from Tani Adewumi, there is still some great chess that you're missing out on. To fix that problem, I, I believe the key game you're going to want to see is this game right here also from Tani. So to be sure to watch that next for some really mind-blowing chess.